Alright, so welcome back to Neo after a rather long time. The uh, first DLC just got released. It had three main missions, a scattering of side missions, all in its own new region, which you can uh, see down there, the Tohoku region. It takes place in the north of Japan and apparently is quite icy. No idea if that's actually accurate or anything to Japan's actual climate, but sure. Having a few more ice levels would be nice, since there was only one in the base game. Well, technically a few others that like use that one for side missions, but that doesn't really count now, does it? But uh, the most notable thing that this first DLC adds, in my opinion, is an entirely new weapon type. One of which I have made right here. The Odachi, or Daikatana as it was incorrectly translated as, or read as. You know, the whole complicatedness with uh, the Japanese language. So yeah, it's a, it's a great sword, basically. And I actually tested it out on a new character because in addition to adding them to the game in general, it also is now one of the starting weapons you can choose when starting a new character. So I just started up a new guy and played around with it, and it was a lot of fun. I am excited to use this. And I didn't even try out any of the skills or anything, so I'm super looking forward to getting used to using the Odachi as I go through the DLC. But uh, one other thing I did in preparation for entering the DLC is respecking my character since I had a few books of reincarnation bouncing around. And that's why I have that rather large Emrit account in the bottom right there. 24,444,449. I really like that the um, Emrit account ended up something quite nice like that. You know, it's not all fours, but it's close enough. Bordered by, if it was bordered by a 1 and a 9, I feel like that would be perfect for me, but I'll take what I can get. So yeah, the first thing I'm going to do is spend all that Emrita so I don't lose it. I also really don't feel like going through the DLC endgame level content with a level 1 character. That would not be my idea of fun. Not just yet, anyway. So yeah, I have to re-level my dude, and since the Odachi primarily scale with strength, and I've never really played like a tanky build, I think I might respect my guy to try and be a more tanky build, focusing on strength, stamina, a little bit of body and heart, and then as much dexterity, magic, and spirit as I need to use the ninjutsu I want. So I'm going to put dexterity and magic up to 10 just to start with, that should give me a good amount of ninjutsu and onmyo magic tools. Spirit is good for pretty much any build. I'm not sure which guardian spirit I'm going to use, but I'm just going to pump it all the way up to 25. Since, at least for the guardian spirits in the base game, since the DLC added a few, uh, the highest amount of spirit you needed to get the bonuses from them was 25, so that's a good number. Skill I'm going to largely ignore, focusing on strength of course. So let's immediately pump that up to like, I don't know, 25? That seems good. Let's pump up stamina to 20, heart to 20, and body to 20. And let's see how many levels I have left over. Still quite a few, okay. So in that case, let's pump body up to 30, heart up to 30. These are your life and stamina. Oops, sorry, key. The stamina stat, that's still so confusing. Like. People come into this game expecting something somewhat similar to Dark Souls, which is actually something you shouldn't do if you're completely new to the game. It's really not like Dark Souls at all, aside from some surface level stuff. But people are going to come into the game expecting that, and having the stamina bar renamed Key and then there being a stamina stat is just needlessly confusing. And again, the translation for this game isn't exactly the best in the first place. Okay, so if I pump all these up to 30, that gets rid of all of my further levels. In case I want to put more points into Dexterity or Magic to just use a few more tools, I'm going to take all these back down to 25. That should give me a decent amount of points to play with, so this should be a, a good way to start with respecking. Now, of course, leveling up is only the short part of respecking your character. The bigger part is reapplying all the skill points you've learned in your journey. I have 187 samurai skill points, which are for the weapons, including the new Odachi, uh, 51 ninja skill points, and 45 onmyo magic skill points. 
I must have uh, missed a few Anmyo magic giving hairs in my journey. Oh well, uh, so yeah, for weapons I'm going to focus on putting points into the Odachi of course, since that's what I primarily plan on using. But the first skills I'm going to purchase are going to be the universal ones. The ones that once you've unlocked them, you've unlocked them for all weapon types. Those are always good to start with that way in case maybe I'm not feeling the Odachi. I don't see that being the case given my um, initial exploration into the weapon, but you never know, maybe I end up feeling like going back to one of the previous weapon classes. In which case having those global abilities unlocked is just, you know, good practice. So let's see... Ah yep, this one's a good skill. Especially since it unlocks the ability to automatically key pulse when you're dodging. If you've not played Neo before, key pulsing is basically an active reload for your stamina. And this enables you to do it automatically with a dodge, which is really helpful. Oh, and interestingly, something I just learned and I never realized on my um, playthrough of the game is this translation here of this skill is highly inaccurate. It's the exact same as the high stance version of the skill, where it says that after you do a perfect key pulse, you'll raise the damage of your next attack. That's true for the high stance version, but for the mid stance version, it actually does something different. It makes it so that while that buff is active, it only lasts for a few seconds. Then the next attack that you block consumes no key whatsoever, meaning you can block anything that's not just straight up unblockable like a command grab. And that's something I'm gonna try to get uh, used to learning. I never really made use of that because I never realized that that was how it worked, because of the uh, inaccurate description there. And uh, the low stance variant is also similar in that rather than making it so that your next block consumes no key, apparently it makes it so that your next dodge consumes no key. That's less useful since dodging doesn't cost all that much stamina in this game, that's I key, but eh, it could come in handy, and more importantly it is again a prerequisite for the key pulse while dodging. And then we have these three down here which are definitely new, they were not there before. That's interesting, are these like, what are these? So. Oh, I actually read about these. Yeah, apparently every skill tree, even I think ninja stuff. No, okay, just the weapon ones. These might be global as well, I'm not sure. But basically they just give you a general damage boost for weapon types for melee weapons, for ranged weapons, and for your barehanded fists. That last one is especially important since fists in this game don't really have a full proper moveset of their own, just like a few light and heavy attacks. So if you actually wanted to do a fist-only playthrough as a sort of challenge run, this makes it a lot more doable. Really hoping one of the two future DLCs they add a proper fist weapon type. I feel like uh, it's deserved. Okay, so now that I've purchased all of the global skills, actually uh, I should also purchase the flux ones. Those are also global. If you uh, switch uh, weapon stands while doing the key pulse you'll recover a little bit of extra key which can be really useful. And might as well pick up this one too even though I never really use it. It's a global skill, it's worth having. Okay, so now that I've purchased all of the global skills, it's time to put as many points as I feel like into the Odachi. So let's see what these skills are like. I, I could have done this off camera and maybe I should have, but eh, I feel like giving my thoughts on the matter. So let's see, mid low stance only uses the hilt of the sword to throw an enemy off balance. Let's see what that's like. Alright, and uh, just from playing around with the mid and low stance movesets that seems especially useful since otherwise you can't smoothly do a heavy attack after a light combo so that'll just increase the uh, length of combos that I can do. Charges into the enemy knocking them off balance. That could be useful. I imagine it does a large amount of key damage to the enemy. It can be done in any stance. Um, I'll think about picking that up. Ooh, yes, I do want to do this. The uh, Great Sword version of the EI Strike. Hell yeah, I love that shit. And then the next skill stabs the Odachi into the earth, then kicks the blade to wound an enemy. If the attack depletes an enemy's key, it will send them flying. That sounds fun. Oh, that looks awesome, yeah. Definitely picking that up. And then 
After getting knocked down, press triangle to attack while getting back up. Oh, that's interesting. So... Definitely they've designed the Odachi to befit a more tanky style of play. So in this case, if you've purchased this skill, rather than simply dodging after getting knocked down, you can actually attack instead. <laughs> I love just the way William starts on the ground there, it's kind of amusing. Yep. Haha, -ha, I'm alive, suckers. That's a cool animation. That's absolutely worth picking up. Especially since it doesn't have its own, like, uh, unique input. Sorry, it has its own unique input, which means you can use it, like, regardless of what stance you're in. And it doesn't overwrite any other skills. Uh, press triangle to perform up to three powerful hits in succession. The technique can be changed by pressing and holding down triangle from any stance. What do you mean it can be changed? Oh, that looks amazing! I love the uh, different flashes of color with the key pulse thing. Press triangle to perform up to three powerful hits in succession. Huh. And yeah, this comes into play because I already have L1 plus triangle input for a skill that uh, previous one I purchased. I'm gonna say no, I'll go through and um, figure out which skills I want for which button inputs after I purchased everything I want to purchase. Because there seem to be quite a few L1 plus triangle moves. Strikes the ground with great force, creating a shockwave that damages the area. Oh my god, all of these skills look so goddamn amazing. It actually makes the um, five base weapon types come, come across just as way less awesome. I guess that's uh, what extra development time allows them to do. Definitely picking that up. And then, mid stance only. Slashes downward with the Odachi. If the attack depletes an enemy's key, it will knock them down. Oh, that's incredibly useful since if you knock an enemy down, you can end up. Oh, wait, maybe not. Uh, you can end up. Uh... Okay, that, that must be if they didn't run out of key. If they do, you knock them down, which does allow you to do a finishing strike for extra damage. So that's worth picking up. And then, what's this? Orange skills, uh, passives. Oh, increased grapple damage. Uh, yeah, I'll hold off on putting points into things like that. Uh, let's see what's next. Waking Winds Heaven allows you to follow up a quick attack from mid or low stance with a strong attack from high stance. Oh, that's that's grill. That's grill. That's great. Again, it allows for more smooth combo transitions from light to heavy, which otherwise the weapon does not have by default, at least from uh, my initial testing. High stance only, rapidly slashes upwards twice. Which, uh, I think I'm just gonna end up picking up every skill and then just um, customizing them after the fact. Allows you to follow up a strong attack from mid stance. Ooh, with a quick stance. Wait. Oh, that's interesting. Does that mean I actually change stances? Huh. Because it allows you to follow up a strong attack from mid or low stance with a quick attack from high stance, a different stance. I'm guessing you keep the mid or low stance, it just allows you to employ a high stance attack while in mid or low stance, which is very interesting. I can't help but feel like they've also designed this weapon somewhat for the new PvP that they've added with the game with this uh, most recent patch. Like this kind of allows for mix-ups in head games. Uh, either way, definitely picking that up. Allows you to- yeah, there's a lot of these. Allows you to follow up a quick attack from high or low stance with strong attack from mid stance. Yeah, I'm just gonna pick all of these up, why not? Um, ooh, a parry move. I love my parry moves. Definitely getting that. Another one of these follow-up moves, and looks like we're at the bottom. Yep, another follow-up. Ooh, leaps above the enemy and cleaves them in two. Oh, that's gonna be awesome to use. You basically flip over them and then slice them in two in twain. And then another follow-up move. And I still have plenty of semi skill points, so I should be able to max out at least one, maybe even two, of the other weapon trees. Since I'm gonna try and play a bit more tankily, at least when I get the armor that allows me to do so, I might uh, end up putting points into axe, since that's a weapon type I never really made too much use of. 
sorry, but uh, that's for later. So, who I want to put points next is into ninjutsu and anmyo magic. And so those are great support things for any build. Oh, they've uh, changed up the UI a little bit. I'm not sure what that means though. I can't use the help button, that little uh, sword crossing symbol with the four next to it. What does that mean? Oh, you know what? That that I think I think that might be for PvP. It tells you how many of those you get. So normally you ready seven, but if you have this equipped when you're doing a PvP match, you only get four. That would make sense. Alright, so Shuriken and the upgraded form, the Kunai, are absolutely fantastic. It allows you to do a little bit of damage and more importantly key damage from any distance. Useful for getting rid of that last little bit of key your opponent has if they try and dodge away and get away from you. Oh, and they just straight up added new items. Storm Kunai were not here before. They've been specially crafted to allow for throwing several at once. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, and then over here you have the uh, mastery skills. Um, if I wanted to focus on the kunai, this would be useful, increasing their damage as well as the damage of bows and firearms, but... Instantly using any self ninjutsu, that's too good to pass up. Oh, and I earned a trophy for that. <laughs> I never actually picked that up. Yeah, of course I want to equip that. It's good stick. Good shit. Uh, let's see. Poison, paralysis stuff. Eh. Not really feeling too big on that. I don't have nearly as many points as the Samurai skill one, so I do have to be a little bit more choosy here. I should try and use ninjutsu items that I didn't use in my playthrough of the base game, but it's hard not to just go with the old favorites. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I never really made use of the Makabishi, the uh, Caltrops, basically. And they could come in handy. Oh, I don't know. So many choices. Okay, well, I'll definitely pick up the uh, good shit to start with. Such as maxing out the number of quick change scrolls I can acquire which, while active, allow you to survive any hit that would normally kill you. That whole uh, anime ninja thing of disappearing in a cloud of smoke and then reappearing. Maxing out on these is absolutely worthwhile. It's probably the best ninjutsu item. Oh, this allows me to perform backstab, so definitely picking up that. Oh, what? This is a new item as well. Allows you to ready three Kodama transformation scrolls. These will change your appearance to that of a Kodama, causing enemies to ignore you. Renders enemy players unable to lock onto you when you are transformed. So this is basically Chameleon from Dark Souls. That's pretty bad. Ooh, power pills are incredibly good. As is this passive bonus, the current damage being that from things like fire and poison that you cause to enemies. And this uh, reduces the current damage that you take. Yeah, let's uh, pick up a few more power pills. Ooh, this is the power you can do while you're barehanded. I'm probably not gonna make use of it. It's honestly just less useful than the other parry moves in my opinion. And of course I want increased ninjutsu capacity, so that way I can equip more ninjutsu. Alright, uh, I don't have too many points left. Uh, you know what? I should pick up Storm Kunai. They seem pretty awesome. And then I have nine points remaining if I feel like using something else. Okay, on to Anmyo Magic. Let's uh, pick up the Mastery skill immediately. Ooh. So this extends the duration of effects from skills and items. So this counts for basically every self buff in the game. 
instant self armio magic and casting boost speed for offensive magic is very tempting, but I feel like this one is more generally useful. So I'll pick up that mastery, and apparently I never bothered to purchase it on my first playthrough. Probably because you don't get the mastery skills until the end of the game. Or the end of your first playthrough, and I really haven't played since then. Uh, let's see... I wonder if Sloth Talismans were nerfed at all. I feel like... Were they nerfed when I played? I feel like they were, but they were still really good. And probably needing another nerf or two. They just straight up cut the enemy's uh, movement speed in half, and they last for a surprisingly long amount of time. If you're having trouble with an enemy, this is the best way to just completely neuter them. Hmm. Eh. You know what, I, I kind of don't feel like cheesing enemies too much, at least not now. I'll keep a few points in case I do end up feeling like cheesing them so I can get these. But I think for now I'll focus on the elemental stuff. Although, may, that's mainly for um, giving me the ability to cheese enemies in a different way. Because if you apply two elemental debuffs to an enemy at the same time, you end up applying a third effect called Discord that completely prevents them from being able to recover their key and makes them take extra damage. It's the easiest way to cheese an enemy. And it's uh, one of the main benefits of investing in Armio Magic. So I'll pick up a basic level in each of those, the weapon buffs, and then the elemental projectile. Let's see what else is useful. I never actually made use of this, mainly because reducing the familiarity of your weapons, which makes it weaker, doesn't seem all that worthwhile to me. I don't know. These passive buffs, however, are incredibly useful. This reduces the uh, key regeneration penalty in yokai realms, which the yokai generate. This increases the purification range for getting rid of those realms. Um, Kekai Talismans make me automatically get rid of those realms when I have the effect up. That's uh, one of the better buffing items. Let's see... Health regeneration, not too useful honestly in this game. Elixirs are all you need. Ooh, if I do plan on playing a little bit more tanky, tankily, tankily, it's not really a word, so, you know, just kind of pick and choose. But, uh, Steel Talisman should come in handy in that case, raising my defense. And this seems like an even better version, using them neutralizes a set amount of received damage. Let's pick up both of these, I suppose. Ooh, Guardian Spirit Talismans are fantastic. I'll definitely want to pick up at least the base level of that, and let's increase my Onmyo Magic capacity. These are nice because they give you basically a magic attack that is dependent on what your Guardian Spirit is, which basically gives you a lot more, like, elemental coverage. Okay, so I've used up all my Onmyo Magic skill points. Um, I, just, I do still have plenty of Samurai skill points to spend, but first I want to do skill customization for the Odachi. So these are universal skills, they're always the same. So then for high stance, what triangle at the end of combo move do I want? Probably the one that's unique to high stance, definitely. Okay, so this one allows me to follow up a strong attack from high stance or mid stance with a quick attack from low stance or from mid stance. Ooh, let me uh, check out the movie to see what that looks like. Alright, that's a decently fast attack. What about this one? Mm. I really don't have a preference at the moment, I'll just go with that one. The EI move... Okay, none of these are unique to high stance. So which one feels most appropriate for that then? I would say Ground Quake does. And 
Mid-Stance, since this is, in, this is a skill unique to the Mid-Stance, I'll obviously want that. Triangle at the end of combo, pretty easy input to use. What about this one? Well, since I used Heaven for High Stance, I might as well use... Earth for Mid-Stance. And then for the triangle wall guarding move for mid stance, well, I already used ground quake, so is moonlit snow more fitting for mid stance or retrograde flow? I feel like retrograde flow is more fitting. And then for low stance, I can have that fancy three hit combo. Alright, well this is mid or low stance only, since I have a different mid stance only skill for mid stance, let's go with this one for low stance. Um... Let's go with this one, I guess. Low stance only, so that's easy enough. Okay, skill customization. Hmm. Still customization is finished. Skill. Did I say still again? God damn it. Okay, wow. Well, yeah, almost 30 minutes. That's about as long as I expected it to take, honestly. That's why I've decided to do it all at the beginning, so that way if you're not interested, you can kind of just skip this. So... I should purchase more skills for weapons. So I did mention the idea of using axe as my secondary weapon, but having something that is significantly faster would probably be better. Which uh, mastery skill for the katana do I want? Increased damage from behind, that's incredibly good. Reduced key consumption while dodging, eh, it's not so great in my opinion. Let's pick up this one. So, I'll definitely want the EI moves. Those are some of the stronger ones. I'll pick up the basic variant. Although I might want to go with Night Rain. That one's uh, pretty cool, and I never made too much use of it. You know what? Why not? Uh, let's overwrite that input. And then the other thing I want is going to be the ability to parry. Oh, the parry moves. So previously, this L1 plus square parry move was my bread and butter. Because what you could do is, you could purchase uh, this second one, Haze and Haze 2. And basically, parry them, follow up with a thrust attack, which then removes all of their key and knocks them down. Then you can do an EI strike, and then a finishing strike, and that combo is the easiest way to deal with any humanoid enemy in the game. But, they've since nerfed it so it doesn't guaranteedly remove all of their key, which means you can't get the combo unless you do reduce their key, which means pairing them when they're already low on key. So, still a useful combo, but you can't do it, like, all the time. And that means that this new, uh, this other triangle parry move... Uh, not triangle parry move, this other parry move is actually arguably a bit more useful. And I actually practiced a little bit with this against, um, one of the humanoid bosses just to get the timing down. Otherwise, I don't think I'm going to purchase too many skills, just because I mainly plan to use the sword as a parry stick. Uh, let's see, it might be worth putting a few more points into magic to you uh, get more on me or magic, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I should use the rest of my Amrita on levels, regardless of what I go with. You know what, let's just kick these uh, three primary stats here up to 30, why not? That saves time. And then the last thing I want to do with regards to readying my character, as we near the 30 minute mark, is actually readying those items. Since I have limited space, I can't use them all. So obviously the quick change scrolls, those are incredibly good. I think I'll ready two of these. That leaves me with 8 points free. The kunai are just a good standby. And power pills are quite useful as well. 
I should try out these storm kunai though, just to see how good they are. Eh, I'm gonna stick with the regular kunai and then power pills, and then for Anmio magic, I'm gonna want one of those defensive talismans. This one gives me two, it's probably not as good as the upgraded one, but yeah, let's go with this. Guardian Spirit Talisman, Kekai Talisman, and all that, um, yeah, I guess I'm not gonna have the space for all this elemental shit. Maybe I should have put a few more points into magic. I can do that in the future. It's not a big deal. And then I want to actually have the items equipped. So let's just get rid of everything so I can have it set up nicely. Um... Down goes my major buff item. Want kunai on the left d-pad. And then on the right d-pad I'll put this other attack. And on this other set of items I'll have power pills at the top. That's what I'm used to. Um, Kekai talisman on the right. Steel Talisman on the bottom, and then I'll just put one of my non-regenerating items on the remaining input. Which, uh, what should I go with? Probably a useful buff. Do I have any uh, water amulets? I like the defense debuff that water causes. Um, Oddly enough, I don't seem- oh no, here it is. There we go. Oh yeah, and my character is naked because, you know, I decided to get rid of all the armor I was previously using and I'll just use whatever I pick up in the DLC. We'll see how good or bad of an idea that turns out to be. Um... Oh, and then one actual last thing is I should change the Guardian Spirit I was using. Previously I was using High Nezumi because I was focusing on Onmyo stuff, but now that I'm no longer doing that, I should probably change it. Uh, the best general use one is Suzaku, since if you have the living weapon available, it will automatically activate when you when you die, which is so useful, but... Eh, honestly, I feel like that's a little bit broken, so I kind of want to use something new. I know there are a few Guardian Spirits that are designed for more tanky builds, which as I've said is something I want to try and do. I really won't be able to do that much until I pick up some heavier armor, but still. Yeah, I think this turtle one is one of the bigger ones. It gives you more more of a defensive boost. Let's see, change to defense based on your magic stat. Uh, if I had more points in magic, this might be useful, but... I think Atlas Bear is the other tanky one. Mm, you know what, let's go with the uh, the good old bear. Okay, so 30 minutes of preparation done, let's actually move on to the DLC.